Today is January 11th, 2013, and I'm speaking with Mary Taff Watkins in her home here in Ames. Mary, uh, thank you for letting me join you today. You're so welcome. And do I have your permission to videotape you today? Yes, you do. The first question I always ask Mary is, what is your birth date and where were you born? Okay. I was born at Mary Greeley here in Ames at, on uh, July 4th, 1921. And did you have brothers and sisters who were also born there? Yes. Uh, I had an older brother and an older sister who were born at home. And then my, the, another sister who was born at Mary Greeley and a younger sister. So there were five of us. Was it because Mary Greeley was not ready for your older siblings? They w it wasn't built then. <laughs> yes. What brought your parents to Ames? Well, my dad went through Iowa State College and um, uh, he got not only his high school uh, diploma, but his uh, degree from, uh, in agronomy at Iowa State. And um, uh, he, uh, he and mother were both raised down in the Panora area. And so after he graduated, they were married and set up a housekeeping here and raised all of us. Did he um, continue to work at the university? Yes, he went right on the staff and he taught for two years. And then he went into extension with an emphasis on 4-H. He loved the 4-H and that was his main uh, experience at the university. Where did you live here in Ames? We lived on Russell, North Russell. That is right across the Squaw Creek on, uh, off of uh, uh, the Lincoln Way. Yes, and um, uh, we, uh, Dad had bought a large home because they had planned on having a large family. And it was within walking distance of the college and also of St. Cecilia's where we all, where we went to school and the high school, junior high and high school. That's interesting because some professors' families chose campus town to live in, but you yes. were kind of right in the middle. Yes, yes. Well, St. Cecilia's was our parish, and so that was why we landed there. Let's talk a little bit about what was your first memory in Ames? I know that sometimes is a hard thing to really wrestle down, but what's your first childhood memory? Well, I suppose it was uh, growing up on Russell because that was such a uh, important part of my life. We had, th that neighborhood was a, a family neighborhood. I lived, we lived right across the street from the Blisses, you know, Dr. Bliss and his family. And uh, I think at one point we had 40 children within a two or three block area there. So you see, it was very popular because they had these big family homes. And so that's why we had so many little ones. It's almost like you had your own camp. It well, was yes, yes, yes. We'd, we'd be meet at the corner of the uh, uh, Russell Avenue and Fifth Street. It would be Fifth Street, I think. Anyway, uh, we had lots of, of friends because everyone had an age group they grew up with. Because you were close to Brookside Park, did you spend a lot of time in Brookside Park as a youngster? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. That was uh, when we had the bridge across Squaw Creek, yes, and uh, we had a lot of time at the park especially after they put in the, all of the equipment. That came later. So when you were a little child, 
could you just play out on the street? Let's say you're a four or five year old, not literally on the street, but your mom would say, go outside and play and yeah, you just play. Absolutely. It, all the mothers were surrogate mothers. They had the rule of the roost if we were in their yard, why we paid attention to them. <laughs> but, but we, uh, uh, yes, we got the free reign and we didn't have any questions or problems at all as they do in now. What kind of games could you play as a youngster in your neighborhood? Oh dear. Well, we had a vacant lot and we played uh, some baseball. Whoever had the equipment got to play, uh, call the game. We used to play marbles. We had, and we used to, uh, in one of these, uh, uh, vacant lots, uh, we dug a tunnel. Now why our folks let us do that? Because it was somewhat dangerous. And I remember that we used to crawl in and out of that tunnel. And, and everyone did. I can remember Bill Bliss crawling in and out of it. <laughs> and so we had a good time with that. That area in more recent times has been flooded. Did you ever experience flooding? No, Russell really is high. We could see the flood from our bedroom windows. I remember looking out and that uh, area <clears throat> that is now the uh, university athletic fields and all was all, always flooded or it seemed to me every year flooded. But Yes, I remember that, but it, we, no, we didn't have any trouble. So let's talk about starting to school at St. Cecilia's. Mm -hmm. Can you describe your class for me? How many youngsters were in your, your first class and that sort of thing? Well, <clears throat> uh, yes, I, I remember it well. Uh, in fact, the building is still there. The DOT bought it. Now they added on after years after our, I left, but but the basic building is still there. And we had kindergarten and first grade in one area. Now you know we had nuns at that time, the nuns from Cedar Rapids, Sisters of, of Mercy. And uh, we had uh, the second grade, we had, let's see, first, second, we had two grades there. Another room, we had three grades. And Sister Martina, now why I remember her, I don't know, but I remember her quite well. I think she was fairly strict. Well, she had to be with three grades. <laughs> so anyway, and then we went up to uh, sixth, seventh and, and um, seventh and eighth grade were the last uh, classes. And we graduated after the eighth grade. It seems to me that in a small sense, part of your education was like a one-room school. In other words, you had different ages of children in the same room, so you would almost learn from the older children. Oh yes, that's very true. That's very true That's that that happened. And the rooms were fairly large. I mean, they were, they seemed adequate. And uh, then we had a music room, Sister Daniel. And she was our music teacher, and uh, she was. She had a long stick that we kept our fingers up. Either that, or we got sort of touch, uh, whipped by the by the uh, long stick that she had. Uh, now I remember that, and um, we had a gym, which was very adequate. And uh, that's where we had, uh, we played basketball, I remember. Now, did boys and girls have uh, physical education together or were they separate? They were separate. Mm -hmm. They were separate. And uh, so that, that was all we had in that school, mm -hmm. one floor. Because um, you went to school at St. Cecilia's and you were close to the St. Cecilia's Church Parish, were there some traditions of the families living in that area? Did you 
have um, church kinds of things on certain days that you celebrated together or that sort of thing? Oh yes, oh yes, very much so. We had some saints days that we got to no school, I remember that. <clears throat> but mostly, uh, yes, we were very closely tied to the church. And at that point, uh, the priest had a home right next to the church. And there was usually one priest and sometimes two, because the parish was relatively large, faced on uh, Lincolnoy. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then that just, we just outgrew that when we built north of town. Are there any other stories about going to school at St. Cecilia's? Any, um, um, did you have fun parties that you did with, did you do birthday parties and that sort of thing with children? Oh yes, we did a lot. Uh, pro uh, it was very close. Uh, we had uh, uh, a young man that came in and gave us uh, drama lessons and we had uh, recordings of symphonies and uh, music and uh, I, it really had, was a well-rounded education. At that point, uh, being a grammar school student, did you know what you liked at that point? Was there a subject that you really liked? Well, I, I can't remember anything special, but I did like to read. I remember that and we did have, we did have some uh, books and I can't, re can't remember where the library was. I don't think we had a library. I think okay. every, every room had books. Did you use the Ames Public Library as a young person? Do you know, I don't remember ever mm -hmm. doing that. I don't remember ever taking trips out like they do now. Mm -hmm. that, right. that was not part of the program. Okay. So when you were a youngster, I'm, I'm thinking of the time that you would have been going to St. Cecilia's school. Uh, tell me what you remember about your dad's job. Did you have a concept of what your dad was doing as a youngster? Oh yes, we had a, uh, uh, we visited dad at, the, at his office quite a bit. He had one of the old recording mechanisms with um, oh, some kind of a record, a round record thing. And on Saturday mornings, sometimes we could go out there and use that. <laughs> and then of course, that, that was Morrill Hall. And they had the, the museum, and that was the big point. Mm -hmm. We had the museum up there that would go up and see the camel that exploded eventually and all of the dusty bugs and all of that it was that was a big point i had forgotten about that museum on top of moral hall yes, i'm yes. glad you mentioned that uh-huh oh that was a big thing for the kids i i remember talking to uh, john nutty his dad worked in the same department that my dad did and he remembers going up there too. And uh, I never knew what happened to that camel. I thought it was an elephant, but <laughs> John said it was a camel. And uh, it was stuck. Uh, there had been a, some kind of a circus here in Ames at one time. And this animal apparently did, 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 was Met its demise? It met its demise, and they, uh, the university got it for the museum. It was stuffed with hay, straw, it was straw. And so at one point, the roof leaked, the straw expanded, and <laughs> the animal was gone. For the second time. Yes. <laughs> it was, well, I remember that part of it, yes. So a little bit about your dad and his job. Um, what about your mom? What was her life like as a homemaker then? 
Oh, she was just a wonderful mother. She had been raised on a farm, so she knew how to cook and work. And she also, before they were married, she worked in a drugstore down in the Petora area. And uh, so she was a very charming person, beautiful person. And uh, uh, she loved to play bridge, but and she tried to play golf because dad loved golf, but she really didn't like it. So that didn't last very long. But she played bridge. They were both, they belonged to a couple of bridge clubs. And uh, the neighborhood was a very closely knit group. And they had, we had picnics and uh, they had bridge clubs for the women. And uh, so, uh, but her main, goal was to raise us. Where did she do some of her marketing, her shopping, and uh, tell me about the commerce, because because she would have had a grocery store probably of choice? And that's oh what yes, well, of course our main one was, but as this came along a little later was Abe Mazvinsky. Uh, you remember where he was behind the uh, school and church? And that was a, her, her favorite one because it was so close. Before that, there was one on Main Street, and I can't remember what it was. Did you ever get to shop with your mother on Main Street for other things? Oh, yes. She uh, used Tilden's uh, as, as the main source of clothes for us. And uh, I remember one winter she ordered snowsuits for all of us. And for some reason, I connected with Tilden's, but it was, they were made by the Ames. Was it made by Collegiate Manufacturing? Yes, Collegiate Manufacturing. So I'm, going, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you then, where were your snowsuits made? At the Collegiate Manufacturing, yes. And um, uh, I, I, I remember having those, uh, but most of the clothes I remember the one uh, fur coat that I got. When, when we got graduated from eighth grade, we all got seemed to get a good winter coat because we were going to have to walk to college. So anyway, uh, I remember getting that at Tilton's and uh, uh, then the fair store. If you had the patience to find, look around, you could find it. Everything was there. Yes. Okay. I remember those two stores. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, finishing up at St. Cecilia's and moving on to the high school. Yes. And uh, you would have gone to high school, uh, your graduation year was 19... It would be 19, uh, let's see, I went to junior high at um, uh, Central, the old junior high, which mm -hmm. didn't last long, uh, and then high school at the high school that was eventually torn down for the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think back but it was just one year that I went to the junior high, mm -hmm. ninth grade, we called it. Mm -hmm. it but it was an old, old building. Oh my, it was an old <laughs> building. This, you know, the steps would be mm -hmm. worn out. And, uh, but that, so that was torn down. And then junior high moved into high school and we had to start half days. Did you know that? We started at 7.30 in the morning and got out at 2.30 because they were building the new high school, which was m built for uh, the city hall. Later it became the city hall. Yes, yes. later it became the city hall after the mm -hmm. one up north was built. But we had to go, and then, at 2.30, then the junior high came in. That was sort of a, 
we, we thought it was great because we got some time off in the afternoons. So, Did you get to go to the, what was then the new high school ever? No. No, you never did. No, but it was interesting because my son went through the next uh, event because when they were built, building the new high school up north, he was at what is now the city hall, and they bust them up there. It was really sort of a, you know, a, a logistics problem, but they seemed to work it out. Well, your family has been involved in a couple different transitions. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah. Now you grew up um, in Ames during the 1930s. And during the 1930s, a significant portion of the United States, uh, the population had to deal with unemployment, um, there was shortage of supplies. Um, did you experience that at all, living oh, in Ames? You know, we call ourselves a Depression kids because we, we lived through the Depression. But we also agree that we didn't know that we were poor because everybody was on the same level. We didn't have that big difference in the rich and the poor. We were all about the same. And so that was good. That was good. That was during the 30s. Mm -hmm. Now, you lived um, on North Russell, which is kind of close to what the railroad tracks are, where the railroad Oh, yes, in. right down, right. Uh, we, uh, North Russell dead ended at the height of the railroad tracks. During the 1930s, there were some homeless people that would ride the rails. Did oh, you yes. experience that in your neighborhood? Oh, did yes. They? We had quite a few. Uh, everyone did. And, and all of them were fed. They were not turned away at all. That's what I remember. Uh, I remember uh, mother would just pick up whatever she had and They'd sit on the back port, on the back steps, and I can remember them doing the same thing to our with our neighbors, and so you know we just survived that. Did they ever offer to do small jobs or some work in exchange for food? No, I don't. Rem well, I don't remember that. Uh, they, we just knew that they were uh, from the tracks, and they were headed one way or the other and they were poor and they were hungry. That's all we knew about. But everybody helped out to feed uh -huh. them. They did. Yes. Well, to go back to high school for just a second, since you were kind of going split yes. days, <laughs> um, <coughs> were there teachers or subject matter that you particularly enjoyed or that you remember? Well, um, I had my favorite teachers, uh, the physical education teacher, Oh, I can't come up with her name now, but she was a del delightful person, and I was uh, sort of athletically de inclined at that point. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Miss Haddish was another, and then the civics teacher. I should remember her. She was a very stern person, mm -hmm. but nice, but very stern. And my brother threw a, a snowball at her and got sent to the, <laughs> the principal's office. <laughs> and I remember that. We thought it, he was going to get kicked out of school, but he wasn't. <laughs> That's how I remember her. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't any very, I was very good at art, so I didn't mm -hmm. take much of that. Did you belong to any clubs in high school? Oh, yes. I, I was in the pep club. Do you remember the, did you ever hear, hear about the pep club? Well, I understand the pep club had uniforms. We had, we had orange jackets and mm -hmm. wore black skirts and white shirts, I guess. I don't know, but I remember that one. Mm -hmm. And we had girl reserve. I don't know what we did. 
Well, since that was you were club. since you were athletic, did you have an opportunity to express that in terms of playing games or being on teams? Because some Iowa high schools at the time had girls basketball, but I didn't know if Ames High no, did. No, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't have anything other outside the school that I mm -hmm. remember. Uh, well, anyway, uh, I did play golf during the high school, and, and Marie Anderson was a very close friend, and she was a good golfer, and Joe McRae, I don't know if you remember, Joe was, uh, her dad was in charge of music at Iowa State, and she was an excellent golfer. So there were, were some of us that played golf, but we, we were not a team. Mm -hmm. Did you belong to the Ames Golf and Country Club? Uh -huh. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And that was in the social outlet. Mm -hmm. I can remember mother and some of the women cooking big dinners on antique stoves. I just don't know how they did it. But we had a lot of social events. Mm -hmm. And I saw my first movie out there. Uh huh. It was, uh, well, it was a cartoon. So you must have been pretty little when you saw it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember. Since you mentioned movies, some of the people that I've talked to who are close to your age talk a lot about the movie theaters downtown. Oh, yes. They, they were very popular. There was one at the end of Main Street. A the Ames Theater, I think it was called, and it had a lot of um, double features and, uh, as I remember, a lot of uh, what? I was trying to think of some of the actors, not for the life of me, I can't remember who they were. But, you, you, you know, if you read about them, you remember them. But then, then, of course, Joe Gabrock was a, was a big person in Ames at that point. Mm -hmm. And when he built his uh, theater down where the bank is now. The Collegian. The Collegian. About the same time they built the New Ames, which is at the college. And, uh, oh, that was grand. Mm -hmm. Did you go on dates to movies? Oh, yes, yes. I, I, I don't... I don't remember going on dates to the Ames Theater because that was sort of get, getting a little ancient at that point. And I was showing the cowboys and stuff like that. But I remember showing uh, uh, Gone with the Wind uh, at the Collegian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if my math is right. Did you graduate from high school in about 1939? 39. Okay. So, um, again, this was the Depression, so I didn't know if you if you had parties. or Did the high, did the high school people have parties? Oh, and yes. You did? We had parties. We, mm -hmm. we managed. As I said, we didn't really... I sometimes wonder how our folks ever survived it because... We didn't help them at all. We just went in our sort of our merry way, you know. I remember the day the banks closed. I remember Dad calling Mother, and Mother got was quite upset and frightened. I think is what she was, and for some reason I remember that. You but would have been pretty did, little then, but that's a very strong memory. But the, yes. But he told her to make sure that all of the ch the money that we had in the house, and we all had our little banks and, and grocery money and stuff like that, that we collected that and we didn't spend it at that point. So I think that's, that was the only time I remember being affected mm -hmm. by the Depression. Right. I know that a way to evaluate a time period sometimes is to know, you know what did kids do to get into trouble? <laughs> did, and so that helps kind of say what a value system is. Can, 
can you talk about kids in high school and if they might have gotten in well, trouble in high school? My claim to fame <laughs> about getting into trouble. I, I can't remember getting into any trouble until I think we were about juniors in high school. And as Billy Brooker and Thelly Levine and I were close friends. And Thilly had brought her family car downtown that had a garage that fixed her car. So she left the car, came to school, we were talking about it, decided we should really use that car for something special. So we, ch we rounded up three boys and anyway, three boys that we knew fairly well. We didn't really, I guess Jim and Billy dated. We, the rest of us did sort of just a group friends. But we got him and before the first bell rang, we walked out of school and Miss Haddish was at the door and she said, here comes trouble. I remember that. And away we went down and picked up the car. And why they let her have it, I don't know what they did. And away we went to Des Moines. Now this was early in the morning, about eight o'clock properly. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, we got back about noon and the whole town knew <laughs> that we had done this because we stopped in at the hamburger shop on Main Street and he said, I hear you kids got in trouble. And we knew that everybody knew it. By the time we all went home, our parents were well informed that we had missed class. And we got sent to uh, Mr. Young, our principal. And he lectured us and he took 3% off our grades and he, we got uh, our seventh period, I think a seventh period. We had to stay after school. But that was my claim to fame. When I tell my family that, they just are, they can't believe that Aunt Mary did that. Well, I said, you know, Skipping school was not all that uh, unusual. My older sister did it. And they went down under the tracks and smoked cigarettes. But <laughs> it was it was just one of those things. It's we lived through it, and so did <laughs> everybody else lived through it. It's interesting to me that lowering a grade point was considered a significant punishment. Oh yes, absolutely, 3%. Now, well, we worked on 100%, I suppose. So it could, if you were borderline. Well, it also says that the school system and probably the parents and children in general really valued education and doing well if mm. that kind of a punishment was considered significant. Yes, yes, I'm sure that's right. So you did get a good education. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it just made too much difference in, in our total education, but we didn't skip school again. <laughs> well, are there other things that you would like to tell me about growing up in Ames, maybe, um, Mary, that I didn't ask you and that you'd like to tell me about? Well, it was a wonderful place to grow up. We had the run of the town. The, the north city limits was 13th Street. After that, it was gravel, but we rode our bikes out to Cars Pool, spent the day, took a sack lunch, you know, it was, it was loads of fun. And, uh, but our folks never, I don't ever remember them worrying about us being out. For the most part, we were always with the group. We were seldom alone. Maybe that was one reason, mm -hmm. but it was fun. 
probably more fun than I remember, but I think it was fun. Well, thank you so much for sharing your memories You're with so me. You're so welcome. I very much appreciate it. You're welcome.